Hey guys, Mark Allen here for BH Spring Solutions LLC and we're going to today explain the science behind the recoil spring guide rod in the high power pistol. Now most recoil spring guide rods um, in most handguns uh, hold the recoil spring in place. They are the guide rod or keep the uh, 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 recoil spring in place as it compresses and decompresses when the slide uh, recoils rearward and goes forward back into forward battery. Um, the high powers recoil spring guide rod is a little different and uh, we're going to show it uh, some of the differences um, about it because it's actually a very complex part. This part of the recoil spring guide rod basically guides the recoil spring you'll see here in just a moment. This part is actually the command and control module of your slide stop and we'll explain that here in a moment too. This is a five piece part. This is a recoil spring guide rod from uh, FN Browning. It is a five piece part. Two metal pieces were fused together in the middle. There's a ball on this end. There's a ball here and then there's a spring in the middle that has uh, some compression to it. Uh, that, that has uh, When a spring is compressed it is trying to get itself back to its relaxed length. Um, nothing expends energy. In other words, it's expending energy, but nothing expends energy forever with the exception of maybe the sun. Uh, so these parts um, are a limited life part. And from the time they're made, that spring inside is basically wearing itself out. And we have guys that are very uh, uh, astounded sometimes when they pull a 30-year uh, high power out of the safe and it's never been fired and they decide they're going to start using it and they start having malfunctions with their slide stop. Uh, specifically, the problem uh, kind of looks like this. This uh, high power has been safety checked multiple times before we turn on the video and we're going to have it apart here in a second but I want to show you the positioning of this slide stop this is a down position this is up as far as it will go and when I push it up it does not come back down this module here uh, and this ball and the relationship to the slide stop when there is pressure on that ball, the natural thing for this recoil spring guide rod to do is to encourage this uh, slide stop to be in the down position. And when it does not stay in the down position, as this one does not, what will happen is as I'm shooting, this slide stop will kind of rattle up and it will lock the slide back before the magazine is empty. And this is kind of one of the classic symptoms um, but you can kind of test your slide stop and see what kind of authority the recoil spring guide rod is having over that slide stop. Now, we're going to go ahead and pop this out and that's about a 25 year old uh, recoil spring guide rod, uh, by the way, and that's kind of what they uh, get to when they are past their useful life. This is an almost new FN Browning. Uh, recoil spring guide rod and I want to show you what happens here when we put this in. Now when I press up you see what's happening. That recoil spring guide rod has some real authority um, has some real authority uh, in keeping that slide stop in the down position. This slide stop is not going to rattle, rattle up uh, during firing. The other thing that this uh, recoil spring guide rod must do is this ball pressure must be um, not so much that the magazine follower cannot push up this slide stop when the magazine is finally empty. And uh, that's kind of a, a, of a different subject. Um, and we don't see that happening too often, but this is what we're looking for primarily in that control of the uh, slide stop. We'll show you another recoil spring guide rod here that uh, BH Spring Solutions and uh, EFK Fire Dragon uh, have uh, introduced and is now coming to market. And that is the Recoil Energy Absorbing Dual Stage Buffering Recoil Spring Guide Rod Assembly. Wow, what a mouthful. Well, this is not a really new idea, but perfecting it for the high power is kind of a new thing because not only do we need to have a buffering spring, you're going to see how this operates like a piston. Inside here is a buffering spring. We actually have three buffering springs that uh, 
come with this component and in this end we have you see the same uh, we call it the command and control module of the slide stop here and a ball and then there's a replaceable uh, ball spring uh, um, inside the unit as well so two springs both replaceable this is a lifetime part and we're going to go ahead and slide it in it has the heavy buffering spring installed right now and we're going to just demonstrate here just a moment you see the authority that it has now, that recoil spring guide rod also must allow that magazine follower to press the slide stop up so you think of the recoil spring guide rod the command and control module for the slide stop and your magazine follower these two are kind of in competition with each other in other words the magazine follower needs to overcome the influence of the slide stop so the slide stop can cam up and lock back when the magazine is then uh, empty we're going to pop this right back out here and talk real quickly about this recoil spring buffering guide rod and the three springs that are with it and what compelled us to make three different buffering springs we have the heavy buffering spring installed right now we have a medium and we have a light um, we ha often have uh, come into our service center 1911s and high powers and guys say well I want the slide to be easier to rack we had a 1911 come in the other day with one of our competitors uh, buffering recoil spring guide rods in his 1911 and this thing was a beast um, I have to tell you it was all I could do to make that slide rack all the way back to where the slide and the frame meet at, at, at uh, full rearward uh, uh, positioning of the slide in order to load the weapon and of course this uh, this guide rod in that 1911 did not have any choice of buffering springs it just is what it is and it was too much for our our customer um, he was a older gentleman and his hands aren't as strong as they used to be um, uh, however this uh, guide rod that we have here we have put three uh, buffering springs with it and generally speaking if you can rack against the heavy buffering spring use it uh, it is optimal however we will have users who are not able to do that and I'm going to show you again a slide rack with this um, heavy buffering spring real quickly you won't even need to put the slide stop in um, you hear it goes all the way to the back the buffering uh, spring inside this is quite stout now my wife can rack a night full-size 1911 with no problem um, we put this in and she tries to rack against it and um, uh, it's just not going to happen with this heavy buffering spring so we made two more springs and we'll take the heavy one out and I'm going to now grab the light one and we'll install it real quickly and my wife has no problem with that light buffering spring completing a full slide rack and a hunt and any buffering of the recoil energy um, is better than no it, it's a hundred percent more than no buffering we put that uh, light one in and we find that that slide rack is a much easier we still feel the buffer effect in that last three-eighths of an inch of uh, rearward slide travel uh, but it's not as um, stout it's not as uh, robust of buffering but you're still going to notice a benefit when you're shooting uh, in terms of control of the uh, muzzle jump or muzzle flip we call it uh, uh, when you're uh, when you're shooting you're going to find staying on target easier however if you are able to rack the slide against the heavy one and then obviously we have one in the middle that's between these two whichever one you can rack comfortably um, and reliably that's the one that you should use we don't want people to overthink these buffering springs in other words do I need to uh, reduce my recoil spring uh, because I'm using the heavy buffering spring the answer to that is no um, I'm gonna pop the, the heavy buffering spring back in here real quickly just to uh, demonstrate one more thing and no the answer is no because and this is uh, one of the interesting um, uh, parts of this uh, design is at the point where your slide is within about three-eighths of an inch of its full rearward slide travel 
the empty shell casing that is held by your extractor meets the ejector and it's flipped out and expelled from the uh, from the pistol that's about three eighths of an inch before full rearward slide travel that's the point where the buffering guide rod uh, encounters the slide or the slide encounters the buffering guide rod I should say and at that point it just adds resistance or buffering to that final three-eighths of an inch of rearward slide travel and the and it's progressive and the the closer you get to that rear end you see even when I uh, even when I am not doing a conscious like this I can have instances where I can't encounter that heavy spring and I don't quite get there. So, but you hear it there. Um, that last three eighths of an inch of rearward slide travel is what we're addressing. From the point where you're within three eighths of an inch of full uh, rearward slide travel, the um, buffering recoil spring guide rod uh, starts to influence or slow the slide uh, velocity of its rearward slide travel. The closer it gets to that frame slide collision, we call it, the more intense the buffering gets because the spring inside is getting compressed and it is, uh, and it is more robust the more compressed it gets. So that is how it works and uh, hopefully this is going to um, uh, help solve some of the uh, questions about what is this recoil spring guide rod in the high power and how is it different what does it do and how does it control my slide stop and the function of my uh, high power thanks for watching folks